Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nolly. So today I'll be talking about the concept of measurement uh, in, to, in this video. Before we get there, I first want to get started by talking about the idea that in the scientific method, which is a video I talked about before, a couple of things that we talked, uh, you know, we mentioned that's part of scientific method is observation and then experiment, right, to test the hypothesis that you propose. So all parts of this, actually, even the hypothesis, usually include some kind of a quantitative um, description of what you're going to be doing. So, for example, in the observation part, if you're talking about, you know, cancer cells that are growing, right, uh, as a result of being in a certain environment, uh, that's usually not enough of a observation. You have to convert that concept of growing into a certain number. So, for example, you would say, the cancer cell on day one has a certain size and on day two it grows by you know 0.1 centimeter or 0.5 centimeter so there has to be a measurement that accompanies that um, concept of growing okay and later on when you're doing the experiment similarly you're gonna be saying that okay if I were to uh, put the cancer cell in, in uh, sugar I'm gonna get um, the cancer cells to grow, for example. Maybe that's your hypothesis, and then you're going to test that by experiment. Now again, when you're doing your experiment, you have to measure. You have to measure to make sure that the cancer cells are growing, or if it's not growing. And not only that, you also have to indicate, well, what specific, how much sugar are you putting in? Okay, so you have to indicate the concentration of sugar that you have in your solution. So everything um, that's involved in the scientific method requires you to uh, convert these qualitative statements, you know, like things like growing or heavy or, uh, you know, certain sugar concentration, all of those into numbers, okay? And this is where measurements become uh, important because a measurement is basically just a quantitative observation, right? You know, when, when I say something is heavy, that's qualitative. But when I say, you know, the book is 10 pounds, that tells me that it's that's a quantitative observation okay now you notice that when I say the book is 10 pounds that measurement has two uh, components to it it has a number 10 and it has a unit pounds okay so we're gonna uh, spend a little bit of time talking about this this part of it which is the unit part so there's two systems of units that we use in the sciences one is the call uh, imperial unit because it was developed by the British Empire and the other one uh, was a unit that was developed a little bit later and it's called a metric system but that unit has now been adopted by the international community so the metric system is also known as the system international or the SI system in um, the sciences you know if you were to publish certain uh, papers or, or uh, want to communicate your f uh, findings to other people in the scientific community you would use the metric system so that's what we're going to be using in the class mostly. We'll use uh, most, you know, I would say 95% of the calculations will be done in the metric system. And some of the calculations would be done in the British or the imperial system um, just because in the United States currently we're still using the uh, imperial system for most uh, measurements like length we still use feet instead of meter and um, for, you know, weight we still use pounds instead of uh, kilograms and so on. But you just have to understand that in, in the scientific community this is the system that we use. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about what that uh, unit's uh, system constitutes. Now, the SI unit has seven base units uh, which I'll talk about in, in the next slide, but those seven base units, from those base units you can basically derive the units for the other properties. Okay, so we'll talk more about that uh, in a second, but let's talk first about the imperial system. These are the type of units that you see in the imperial system, and uh, I think a lot of these uh, hopefully are uh, familiar to most of you who um, grew up in the United States, that um, you have, you know, lengths measured in inches, uh, feet or yards, uh, miles, and mass in ounces and pounds, and volume in fluid ounces and cups, pints, quarts, and so on, okay? Uh, now we can talk about the uh, SI units or the metric system, okay? So you can see here that the units for those same quantities, like length, for example, is a, is a different unit. Now it's called meter, uh, mass, it's not expressed in pounds, but in kilograms, and so on, time in second. 
uh, etc. So these, by the way, the first table here corresponds to those seven base units I was talking about earlier. Okay. Now from here you can derive the units for other properties that you're interested in. For example, let's say you're interested in the uh, in area. Okay. Well, we know that area is um, length times width, and the unit of length is meter. The unit of width, which is uh, basically another dimension of length, is also meter. So in other words, the unit of area should be the unit of length times the unit of width, which is just meters times meters, which is just square meters. Okay, So that's how you get other units, units for other properties, from the base units in the SI. Uh, and this goes all the way to things that are quite complicated, like energy, for example, which is expressed as, you know, force times distance. And then you have to know what the unit of force is, which is mass times acceleration. And you have to know what acceleration is. But you, you basically, what, what I'm trying to uh, convey here is the idea that you can take, you know, these base units and you can, you know, as long as you understand what the quantity is, what, what the property is, and how it relates to the basic properties here, you can basically derive a unit for that particular property, okay? And we'll talk about some of these units later on throughout the semester. But those are the ones that, uh, you know, that's just kind of the concept of deriving units from a base unit. Okay, so one of the issues that you know, we have, obviously, since we have these two systems of units, is we, we need to convert between the units. And the idea of converting between units shouldn't be something that's new to you. You should have learned this in a prior course in uh, introductory chemistry. But let me just kind of mention the general idea of this. What you want to do is you're going to want to go to some final unit that you're interested in, okay? And in order to get there, you're usually starting with a unit that's not the same. Okay, so you might have feet here and you want to, you start with meter or centimeter or something like that. Okay, so the idea then is to find uh, what we call conversion factor, which is basically just how one unit relates to another unit. So for example, in this case, our starting unit is something that we want to cancel. So mathematically, you want to have your um, starting unit at the denominator of this conversion factor so you can cancel those two things out together and then leaving you at that point with the intermediate unit one okay and then of course that's not what you're looking for because you're looking for something uh, like the final unit so you have to relate that intermediate unit one with the final unit so there might be a conversion factor that's provided for that final unit over intermediate unit one and again you want to put that intermediate unit one at the bottom because that will allow you to cancel with the numerator here for the uh, uh, fraction in the middle okay so let's do a, a quick you know couple of illustrations of how this works right hopefully everybody is uh, fairly familiar with this but if you look at this let's say you, you started with meter okay somebody gave you a quantity and it's X meter okay 20 meters you know 15 meters whatever and they're asking you to convert that to uh, feet okay or to inches I'm sorry so you want inches in the end, okay, as your answer. So what do you have to do? Well, there is no um, direct relationship, the direct conversion factor between meter and inch, but we can, you know, if you look up the textbook or you look up online, usually there's a conversion between meter and um, feet, okay? So one meter is about 3.3 .3 feet, uh, and notice that this is our starting unit meter, and we want to cancel that out, so we put the meter at the bottom and the feet at the top. Now, this is your conversion factor, feet to meter. You can easily write this as 1 meter over 3.28 uh, feet. It just depends on what you want to cancel. In this case, you want to cancel a meter, so that's, what you, that's why you write it this way. Okay. Once you do that, then you're left with uh, feet, but of course that's not um, what you're looking for. You're looking for inch, so you need to look for a conversion between a foot and inches and of course we have that which is 1 to 12 12 inches per foot so then we would uh, write that again as a conversion factor with the foot at the bottom because that's what we're going to cancel and so you notice that after canceling this one after canceling that one I'm left with inches which is the unit I'm looking for and as far as the number component you just multiply all of these guys right you multiply x 
the given times 3.28 times 12, okay? So then the answer in this case would be x times 3.8 times 12 inches, okay? So that's example number one. In the second, uh, in the following video, I'm, I'm going to actually show this example number two here uh, as well, or illustration number two, and I'll go through an example to show you how this conversion uh, factor works.